Hi, I'm Jared Burns, and you're listening to Stump the Preacher, a podcast where we explore how Christianity and the Bible intersect with our deepest questions and our daily lives. In each episode, I address a submitted question to help you find Bible-based, Christ-centered answers to what's on your mind. I don't claim to have all the answers, but I love helping you search for them. So join me today as we research another question. I want to thank you for joining me for this inaugural episode. I'm your host, Jared Burns, and to get things started, I'd like to introduce myself and my idea for this podcast before we dive into today's topic. I listen to a lot of ministry-related podcasts, and I usually like to know a little bit about the person speaking because it helps me to know whether or not they're a credible source of information. So I've been pastoring for 11 years, and I currently serve as the pastor at Trinity Baptist Church in Seminole, Oklahoma. I'm married to my lifelong friend, Charla, and we have four kids, two sons and two daughters, and they range from eight years old down to 10 months at the time of recording. And so as you can imagine, in a house with that many small kids, there's a lot of chaos, there's a lot of noise. And there's a lot of questions. And I love the questions. I love the questions, especially the questions about God or the Bible or Christianity, because I've always loved helping people find answers to those kinds of questions. Uh, So when I got ready to work on a master's degree, I went to Louisiana Baptist University to study Christian apologetics. Now, people sometimes wonder if apologetics means something to do with apologizing. But apologetics really just means giving a reasoned defense for our faith. And apologetics saved my own faith at a crucial point when I was younger. Right out of high school, I went to the University of Oklahoma, and I encountered skeptical professors who inundated me with questions that I just couldn't answer. And I had to study hard and ask questions myself. I I had to do a lot of digging and a lot of research and a lot of uh, soul searching. But as a result of that difficult time, I came away more convinced than ever that Jesus Christ died on the cross and that he rose again and that he did all of that to save mankind from our sins. Just knowing there were answers out there and being able to find some of them or knowing who to go to made all the difference. But I know others who didn't have the answers either. And they didn't go looking for answers because they didn't know there were any out there. And for some of them, it destroyed their faith and really turned their lives upside down. And that's why I'm so passionate today about apologetics. I know what those nagging questions can do to a believer. And I know that those questions can even sometimes hold back someone from faith in Jesus Christ altogether. But if Christians can address these questions and help people overcome those obstacles that stand in the way of their spiritual growth, then I believe the Holy Spirit uses that as He draws people to Jesus Christ for salvation. And that's what this podcast is all about, overcoming those obstacles to faith by seeking Bible-based, Christ-centered answers to the questions of life. A couple of years ago, I started something at Trinity on Wednesday nights called Stump the Preacher. And I gave people opportunities to submit written questions to me anonymously. They could submit questions about anything, although I eventually had to impose a rule where the deacons were only allowed to ask one dinosaur-related question a year, just so we'd have time to get to other things. But I told them they could submit written questions to me anonymously, and then I would research that subject, and I'd put together a presentation, and then we'd devote a whole Wednesday night to discussing that question. And the people were excited to do it. Uh, We've done it periodically since then, and they still seem to be excited when those questions get answered. As a matter of fact, Stump the Preacher has been better received than almost any other series I've done on anything on Wednesday nights since I've been here. And so with that response, I've always wanted to expand Stump the Preacher outside of our four walls to try to help others. And I finally decided to do a podcast. 
And on each episode, I plan to look into one of these questions that are on people's minds. Now, as we do this, questions from my church members or my kids are going to take precedence because that's just how this works. But listeners can submit questions too. And I can't guarantee that I'll get to every question I'm asked, but I'll answer as many as I can. Now, it's important to point out as we get started that I don't pretend to have all the answers. And in doing this podcast, I'm not here to win a debate or even to have one, really. The more I learn, the more I realize how much I don't know. And that has a way of humbling you, whether you like it or not. 10 or 15 years ago, I thought I had all the answers, and I thought I could argue people into Christianity. And now I realize that I don't have all the answers, and that I can't do the Holy Spirit's job for him. So I'm not here to try. My goal here is to help people find those Bible-based, Christ-centered answers to life's questions to the best of my ability. Because in the end, I'm not here to make you think that I know lots and lots of stuff. I want to see non-believers trust Jesus Christ as their Savior, and I want to see believers grow in their faith. And if helping someone find an answer to his or her questions helps with that, even in some small way, then it's a privilege to be involved. And since I needed some time in this first episode to really introduce the podcast, I wanted to deal with a question that I think can be answered quickly and and fairly easily. And that question is, why should we bother to deal with apologetics? Why should we bother with it? Which is also a good question to introduce the podcast. Now, this question wasn't submitted for a Wednesday night study, but I do get asked some variation of this question nearly every time I teach on apologetics. Some Christians genuinely think that apologetics is a waste of time. I remember one instance a few years back when I was preaching on a Sunday morning and I was talking about how some people object to Christianity for various reasons. And I threw out a particular objection and I asked the congregation, if somebody said that to you, how would you respond? And a man in the back of the congregation shouted back at me, it doesn't deserve a response. I was shocked at the time, but I I tried to explain to him that it did deserve a response and why. Uh, But some people genuinely think apologetics is a waste of time. People who object to Christianity, they don't deserve a response. Now, I don't think that's a majority perspective, but it's out there. Because as I said, nearly every time I do a series on apologetics, somebody asks, why are we bothering with this? They may not ask it in that exact way. They may be a little more polite and diplomatic about it, but they want to know, why why are we spending time on this? And I think that that resistance to apologetics comes from a few different places. I think some people see apologetics as something obnoxious or mean, like we're attacking others. Now, I can see where they get that idea because some people who are involved in apologetics act like conflict is their spiritual gift. So, again, I see where they're coming from. But just because people do apologetics wrong doesn't mean we get to abandon talking to others about their questions. It means we need to get better at it. As individuals, as Christians as a whole, we need to get better at it. We need more Christians who are better equipped to speak the truth in love. That's apologetics. It's not arguing. It's not debating. It's speaking the truth in love, very often in the context of a relationship with someone. It's using a respectful discussion of ideas to point people to hope in Jesus Christ. It's not belittling them and trying to prove that we're right, it's pointing, to some, it's pointing somebody to Jesus Christ. Now, I also think some people are resistant to apologetics because they just don't see a need. After all, they'd say, it's up to God to save someone and change their hearts. I've heard this objection. It's up to God to change someone's hearts and to save them. We can't argue them into heaven. Now, every bit of that is true, but think about it like this for just a minute. Saying we shouldn't address people's questions and their objections, all these obstacles to faith, saying we shouldn't address those things because it's up to God to do the saving is like saying we shouldn't share the gospel with people because it's up to God to do the saving. I don't think any of us are going to find support for that position in our Bibles. God could save people with or without our involvement if he wanted, but his plan, what he's chosen to do, was to leave us here to share the gospel for us to be involved 
and for us to point people to Christ. Now, he still does all the saving, but he's chosen to use us to point people to his salvation. And as far as I'm concerned, when we do it right, there's a tremendous amount of overlap between evangelism and apologetics. To look at what the Bible says, we should bother with apologetics because it's faithful to biblical examples. The examples that the Bible provides for us, we see people doing apologetics. We see the Apostle Paul in his famous sermon in Acts chapter 17. He addressed the religious sensibilities of the pagan crowd on Mars Hill, and he used their religious beliefs as a springboard to point them to Jesus Christ. That's apologetics. We see in the Gospels where Jesus dealt with the objections of the woman at the well. As he talked to her, she continued to throw out questions and objections, and he answered each of those in a way that he would use them as an an opportunity to point her to the salvation that he could provide. So when we deal with somebody's questions and objections or their religious sensibilities or what we would say are wrong answers to things, and we lovingly and gently use those as a springboard as an opportunity to point somebody to hope in Jesus Christ. That's apologetics. And when we do that, we're being faithful to the examples that we were given in Scripture. But it's not only faithful to biblical examples. We should should bother with apologetics because it's faithful to biblical commands. We're told in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 to take every thought captive to obey Christ. We're told in Jude verse 3 to contend for the faith that was delivered to the saints once and for all. And we're told in 1 Peter chapter 3 to be ready at any time to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do this with gentleness and respect. That gentleness and respect are key. If we're going to be obedient to what God's Word says, we have to be prepared to give an answer for our faith. We have to be prepared to depend, to defend it, and that means apologetics. So why should we bother with apologetics? Now, the most important reason is that God said so, that faithfulness to biblical commands. But we should also do it because we're ultimately defending the gospel, not our points, not our arguments. We're defending the gospel. And in so doing, we're glorifying God And we're dealing with obstacles that stand between real people and the faith in Christ that makes a difference in their eternity. Now, that's all the time we have for today. I appreciate you joining me for our first episode. And if you've ever wondered about our purpose in life, come back next week when, Lord willing, I'll tackle the question, why did God create us? Thank you for listening to today's episode of Stump the Preacher. If you have a question you'd like us to consider for a future episode, just visit us online at stumpthepreacherpodcast.com and use our contact form to submit it. You can also find more Bible teaching from me on my website, jaredburns.com, or on my other podcast, Rejoicing in Truth, a daily program available on iTunes, Spotify, and most other podcatchers. 